Kelm Darnock and uh, vigils agro uh, wing last month the prison culminum. Um, on May 9th, 1916, 12 men have, have been executed by firing squad in Kilmainham and one in Cork Jail. Many lie under sentence of death, not yet commuted to imprisonment. James Connolly, at that stage, lay wounded under a sentence of death, not yet commuted to imprisonment. James Connolly was gravely wounded in Dublin Castle. And the Irish people are shocked and sickened by the executions. But the British government is encouraged by the Irish Independent newspaper. If these men are treated with too great leniency, they will take it as an indication of weakness on the part of the government. Some of these leaders are more guilty and played a more sinister part in the campaign than those who have already been punished with severity. Let the worst of the ringleaders be singled out and dealt with as they deserve. Editorial Irish Independent. 9th of May, 1916. On May 9th, two of the men whose execution was demanded by the Irish Independent are tried by court martial. Sean McDermott and James Connolly. Sean McDermott and Tom Clark, close friends and comrades, revived the Irish Republican Brotherhood and made its military council the driving force for the 1916 Rising. After Pierce formally surrendered on Parnell Street, McDermott addressed the assembled volunteers in Moore Street. The only terms the British military authorities would listen to would listen to were an unconditional surrender. We surrendered, not to save you, but to save the city and the people of this city from destruction. You would have fought on. No matter, I am proud of you. You have made a great fight. It was not your fault you have not won the Republic. You were outclassed, that is all. They had the men, the munitions, munitions the force. But this week of Easter will be remembered, and your work will tell someday. Sean McDermott was court martialed in Richmond Barracks on May 9th and sent to Kilmainham to await execution. His final statement is dated the 12th of May 1916 and is timed 3.30, just 15 minutes before his execution. Before that, he wrote his last letter, and tonight we have with us uh, some of his grandnephews, Moira McLeanus, Kay McDermott, and Michael McDermott, to read his last letter. Hello, I'm Moira Milonis Grant. Sean McDermott's last letter, Kilmainham Jail, Dublin, May the 11th, 1916. My dear brothers and sisters, I sincerely hope that this letter will not come as a surprise to any of you, and above all, that none of you will worry over what I have to say. This is just a wee note to say that I have been tried by court-martial and sentenced to be shot to die the death of a soldier. By the time this reaches you, I will, with God's mercy, have joined in heaven my poor father and mother, as well as my dear friends who have been shot during the week. They died like heroes, and with God's help, I will also throughout be as heroic as they were. I only wish you could see me now. I am just as calm and collected as if I were talking to you all, or taking a walk to see Mick Rin, or some of the old friends and neighbours around home. I have preached with me almost constantly for the past 24 hours. One dear old friend of mine, Father Brown from the Nooth, stayed with me up to a very late hour last night. I feel happiness, the like of which I never experienced in my life before, and a feeling that I could not describe. Surely, when you know my state of mind, none of you will worry or lament my fate. No, you ought to envy me. The cause for which I die has been rebaptized during the week by the blood of good men as ever trod God's earth, and should I not feel justly proud to be numbered amongst them? 
Before God, let me again assure you how proud and happy I feel. It is not for myself so much that I feel happy, but for the, ha the fact that Ireland alone has produced such men. Uh, enough of the personal note. I'd hoped, Pat, to be able to help you in placing the children in positions to earn their livelihood, but God will help you to provide for them. Tell them how to scrub out for myself and counsel them to always practice truth, honesty, and straightforwardness in all things and sobriety. If they do this and remember their country, they will be all right. Insist on their learning the language and history. I have a lot of books and I am making arrangements with one of the priests to have them turned into a library, but I can arrange if you get some of them for the children. You might like to get these clothes that I'm wearing to have them in memory of me, so I'll arrange if possible to have them and any other little things belonging to me that you'd like to have. Of course, for Dan and Maggie also. There are a few copies of a recent photo which you can take and you might order more copies, copies for friends who might like to have one. Of course, you got the letter I sent you a few days before Easter. By the way, when you're in Dublin, find out if I owe money to my landlady, and if so, pay her. I don't think I do, but at the moment, I'm not certain. One more, one word more about the children. Put some of them to learn trades, if you can at all. You will see if they show any promise of mechanical or technical skill. They were too small when I saw them to advise. Tell Maggie she ought to try and get Mary Ann to go for teaching. I don't know what Caddy ought to do. As for Dan, I suppose he will decide for himself. God direct him. He need not regret for staying at home for so long. Make a copy of this and send it to the others as soon as you can. A lot of my friends will want to hear about me from Seamus, Rose, and Kate. They can tell them all that in my last hours, I am the same Sean that they always knew, and that even now I can enjoy a laugh and a joke as good as ever. I don't know if you will require a pass to get to Dublin, but you better find out before you start. Perhaps martial law will have been withdrawn before you can come. It was passed for one month only, and I don't think that it will be renewed. If I think of any other things to say, I will write them to Miss Ryan. She, who in all probability, had I lived, would have been my wife. I will send on after mention to my aunt landlady, but she knows you all right. Goodbye, dear brothers and sisters. Make no lament for me. Pray for my soul and feel a lasting pride at my death. I die that the Irish nation may live. God bless and guard you all, and may you have mercy on my soul. Yours as ever, Sean. P.S. I have not mentioned Patrick or, or his mother but they know they're included for old, very old time's sake. Yes, before there was even a thought of Maggie, Mary, and Patrick, also Bessie, Mary, and Will. I'd love to clasp the hands of each and every one of you, many, we, every one of you and many other dear friends, but I will meet you all soon in a better place. Remember me to all my friends and give some money to Fathers Joe, Fathers Foy, and McLaughlin for Mass for me. Goodbye, Sean.